In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the recall velocity. So, what is the recall velocity? So, I've got a gun here, as you can see. So, once you shoot the gun, we're going to have the bullet going in this direction. Okay, so we're going to have the velocity of the bullet. Okay, at the same time, if we remember Newton's third law, for every action, there is equal but opposite reaction. So, what is going to happen here is that the force which we are going to use to shoot the gun, to shoot the, uh, the bullet here, is going to be the same as the force which the bullet, uh, which the gun is going to, to use to push you backward. Okay? So, the recall velocity which we are talking about here is just basically the velocity which is going to be going in opposite direction with the velocity of the, uh, of the bullet. Okay? So, we are going to have two velocities. Initially, the bullet and the gun, they are going to be at rest. Then, after collision, we can say after collision, we expect to have the velocity of the gun and the velocity of the bullet. But now, since the bullet, since the gun is going to be moving in opposite direction to the direction of what? The bullet, we are going to assign the negative to that velocity. So, in general, when we are talking about the recall velocity, the recall velocity is always negative. So, what is going to happen is this. We are going to have the momentum before collision, or let me say momentum um, initial, has to be equal to the momentum final. So, here we have got two, we have got two things. We have got the momentum of the bullet and the momentum of the gun. Okay? So, we are going to say the mass of the, um, the bullet times the velocity of the bullet initially plus the momentum or the mass of the gun times the velocity of the gun initially has to be equal to the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet that is going to be now the final one plus the mass of the gun time, uh, time the velocity of the gun final. Now, initially what we have to understand when we are talking about the recall velocity is that these two they are going to be initially at rest. So, we don't expect to have this. So, we are going to have zero there. So, we are going to have zero plus zero is going to be equal to. But now, the velocity of the gun, since it is moving in opposite direction with the velocity of the bullet, is going to be negative. So, I'm going to have my formula which is going to be M, B, V, then I have B final, minus, here, this minus just symbolizing to say it is going in opposite direction. This negative is for the velocity. So, I'm going to have this. Okay? Now, I can shift this to the other side and I can say that the mass of the bullet or the mass of the gun times the velocity of the gun final has to be equal to the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet the final so in short this is the overall formula for the recall velocity but after finding that velocity remember to put the negative so recall velocity is always negative so in general we're going to say we're going to have um m1 is same as just having m1 um v1 final is going to be equal to m2 v2 final so the recall velocity is going to be for this one but it's going to be what negative okay so in general we can say that this force the force of um, the bullet is going to be equal to the force of the gun so this is the principle of what the recall velocity so i have a question which is saying a 500 kg wheeled cannon rest on a frozen lake and fires horizontally a 10 kg cannon bow with a muzzle velocity of 400 meters per second. Calculate the recall velocity of the cannon. It's supposed to be the recall velocity. So now to find the recall velocity, let's say we have uh, the mass of the cannon, which is in the mass of the cannon, which is um, a 500 kgs then i have the velocity 
of the canon initially this is going to be zero because eh, remember we said that initially the velocity uh, of the canon and the velocity of this ball they have to be at uh, is this going to be zero so I'm going to have also the mass of the ball which I'm going to call it MB to be equal to 10 kg the velocity of the ball initially it was zero then the velocity of the ball the final velocity is the one which have been given 400 meters per second okay remember we have to say the mass of uh, the cannon times the velocity of the cannon initially plus the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball initially has to be equal to now this is going to be negative so we're going to have negative m the mass of the cannon times the velocity of um, the cannon final plus the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball final okay now since this is going to give us zero we can cancel them these are going to give us zero and we expect to have zero to be equal to negative m c v c final plus we're going to have plus the mass of the ball then the velocity of the ball final so I can now shift this to the other side I'm going to have the mass of the cannon then the velocity of the cannon final is going to be equal to the mass of the ball then the velocity of the ball final now we can divide both sides by the mass of the cannon even here by the mass of cannon so these two are going to cancel we're going to have the velocity of the cannon final is going to be equal to the mass of the ball is uh, 10 times the velocity of the ball which is the final is 400 we divide this by we divide this by the mass of the cannon which is a 500 okay so we're going to have a 10 times a 400 then I divide this by a, a 500 so I'm getting 8 I'm getting 8 meters per second but remember the recall velocity is supposed to be negative so it's going to be negative 8 meters per second that is going to be my recall velocity okay so next I've got this question which is saying an anchor stands at rest on a frictionless ice his total mass uh, including his bow and the quiver of arrows is 60 Point zero zero kgs as shown in the figure below. If the anchor fires a 0 0.0300 zero zero kgs allo horizontally at five at fifty meters per second in positive x axis or positive x direction, what is his subsequent velocity across the eye? So they're asking about what is the recall velocity. Okay. So now remember what we have to remember here is that we are trying to find the recall velocity and we can come up with data we have so I'm going to call this mass to be m1 the mass of everything to be m1 so 60 kgs then I'm going to call my m2 to be 0 0.0300 0 kgs then again I have the velocity of which is the v2 final to be equal to um, 0 is 50.0 meters per second then I don't know the velocity to uh, the velocity one fine we know that v1 and v1 initial and v2 initial is going to be zero so I don't know the v the v1 fine so I'm going to say the this formula stands I'm going to have this formula plus m to v to final so I shift this to the other side I'm going to have um, I'm going to have m1 v1 final to be equal to m2 v2 final I can divide both sides by m1 even here by m1 my goal is to find the v1 final so I'm going to have v1 final to be equal to m2 v2 final everything divided by m1 
let's plug in the values we see what we're going to have so expect our recall velocity to be v1 final will be equal to what is m1 which or m2 so m2 is 0.0.0 three zero zero times the velocity is fifty everything divided by sixty so v1 final is going to be our core velocity we need to have it is going to be negative okay because the core velocity is always negative so I'm going to have I'm going to have um zero point zero three zero zero times 50 everything divided by 60 so I'm getting my recall velocity to be negative 0 0.025 meters per second now the recall velocity is negative because when when this arrow is going in this direction we want the recall velocity which is going to be moving in opposite direction that's the reason why we include negative okay so this is what you need to understand and um, our recall velocity